All right, everybody, thank you for joining me for video two in the series about uh, making your own dropshipping tools. And in this video, we're going to be looking at the program uh, where we get the product price comparison tool between multiple different websites. And the three websites that I'm going to use are eBay, Walmart, and Home Depot. Um, again a, a reason for this is uh, if you have a product or a list of products that you know uh, are good sellers and you want to say okay well let me you know m maximize I guess the money that I can save by always going to the least expensive source because you may you have this product and you know that it's available on all three of these different websites you just don't know that uh, which one has the cheapest price or whether or not it's available on that website at all um, and so on and so forth and you can use this concept for any other website so that's why I'm choosing to do these three different websites um, not just because they're good examples but also to give you the opportunity to kind of understand how to do it with a website of your own choosing um, so okay so the first thing we do in our price comparison tool, um, just kind of outlined, is data collection. We have to do the web scrape. <clears throat> we have to do the web scrape for eBay, Walmart, and Home Depot. And for this, I will be using Selenium. And the reason I'm going to use this is so I can see what's happening as the program goes. It's going to show me uh, what information is being looked up and collected at the time that it's happening um, by using our browser and I'm going to be using uh, Chrome browser and ChromeDriver.exe and all you have to do is you Google download ChromeDriver.exe and then you download it and you extract it into uh, our working folder and my working folder is called price comparison tool inside of here there is my folder called support files inside of there is chromedriver.exe you're going to want to download and unzip that into here and <clears throat> that's going to be necessary if we're going to be using selenium um, and if you're using chrome if you're going to use firefox you would use gecko driver but i think that that has not been playing nicely with selenium lately or something I don't know so anyway I'll get rid of that because it's just in the way and then index.py is a little bit of code that I already have written up so the first thing I'll do is I'll show you that but actually I gotta finish talking about this um, after we collect all the data we want to save it to a CSV and what I'm gonna try to do is collect a hundred UPCs so then we can sort our CSV by the uh, demand rating that we give it so we can get an idea for uh, out of all 100 of these different products how do they compare to each other in sales ratings and in their sales history so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into index.py and I, I don't know if that's a thing you do with Python or not but I just didn't know what to call it so I just call it index.py um, so our first line is from Selenium Import Web Driver. You're going to need to pip install Selenium, um, and I think that's it. <clears throat> then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my variable web equal to webdriver.chrome, and inside of here I have this is the path to our Chrome driver. Then I've got my UPC. This is a UPC code that I'm hard coding into here and the reason I'm choosing this one is because I already know that this item is available on all three of the websites that I want to look at today but typically what you're gonna have is if you're gonna do a list of a hundred UPCs you're not gonna know if it's available on any of these websites um, so you can kinda use this method to determine whether or not it's available on that website as well not just to get its sales history um, so anyway, so now I have my URL for Home Depot, and the way that I got that was I went to the Home Depot website, and I went to the uh, search bar. I just went to the just HomeDepot.com, 
went to the search bar and in quotation marks in double quotes or single single quotes I don't think it matters but I put I put my uh, UPC code <clears throat> so it will find exactly the item that I'm looking for if it's available on this website and if it is it'll show up if it's not which probably all I have to do is just change that to a I don't know something and if it's not available you're gonna get the message hmm we couldn't find this at least on Home Depot you're gonna get that so um, back to this page so what I did was like I said I uh, put that in there hit enter and now I have the UPC code for the page the URL to the page that I want to visit and all I did was I posted it into my program and URL underscore home depot equals okay and then I took out my UPC code which is this uh, does it put a zero at the front of it? Mm, well, I, mm, no, I just put it in as that, but it's different here. So let me just put that there. Okay. So all I did, I had to take my UPC code out and then put this there. But also, this is the quotation marks. This is the, uh, I guess, encoded character for, um, for the website, whatever. So anyway, that's how I did that and that's going to give me the link to where I want to go to so when I did web dot get URL underscore Home Depot um, well when I ran this line this is the line that the browser opens up and then this is the line uh, web is going to be the window you can think of the variable web as the window so now I want to say you know window dot get uh, but I use web because it's just quicker to type and easier to control I'm a web dot get uh, URL underscore Home Depot. So then it went to the URL that we wanted it to go to, which is this plus that right there. Um, and it goes to goes to that page, gets the title, gets the price, and prints it out. So I'm gonna hit F5, and it's gonna run the program. And the first thing that happens is the window opens up, like I said, and then it's gonna go to the link that we specifically. Uh, asset to go to when we said web.get and the page is gonna load up and what happened oh uh, I did hmm, I don't know anything price underscore oh, okay so hmm well I'll fix that right now and then we will either move to the next video actually or uh, probably that so all right um so what's my error here? I don't know. I don't know what this is. Price underscore Home Depot. That's the last line. I think I just changed something about that. Uh oh. Okay. Um. Hmm. Web dot get URL underscore Home Depot. Web dot get title underscore Home Depot. So, uh. Hmm. Price under. So why did this not work? Let me just try it again and see if that makes any difference and every time it runs it pops up a new window which does get a little bit annoying there's probably a way to fix that I guess I haven't bothered to alright so what happened uh, Chrome driver what are you telling me are you telling me that I need to update Chrome or something price underscore Home Depot uh, I might have oh you know what I think I messed it up when I changed the name of one of my variables Uh, so we're gonna inspect uh, so just price double underscore numbers okay yes okay all right now we're gonna run it this thing's gonna go window opens up goes to the URL that we are asking it to go to and then in this window it's going to extract that data what the <laughs> price double underscore numbers what did I do wrong oh okay so alright forgot to change it there too alright I'll explain this after I run it so yet again <laughs> 
we're gonna go to our page uh, I don't think you have to open up a new thing every time but I don't know so it's gonna load up the page then it's going to extract this information and print out uh, everything that we asked it to print out which is the UPC on the first line the title of the item on the second line and the price on the third line um, now let me check my time uh, 10 minutes yes okay so <clears throat> I will explain this code and then that will be the end of the video so alright so I said at web.get it goes to the URL then I set my variable title underscore Home Depot equal to web so this is going to that window and it's saying in the HTML of the current page or not of the current page of our specified page I guess I'll say we're going to find underscore element by class name so you want to find an element by its class name and this is the name of it in there and all we have to do to find that is uh, URL underscore what did I say title okay so when you're using Chrome we're going to go into our uh, whatever you call it tools uh, we're gonna right click and inspect on the thing that we want to look at okay so div class price double underscore numbers so when I look at this item you see it's highlighted on this side of the page when the mouse is over it on this side um, you see that it's a div a class it's a it's got a div tag if you know anything about HTML at all that's the tag the first thing is always going to be the tag right there it's got the uh, the angle brackets um, that's going to be your div tag and then the next thing the thing with the space after that is uh, going to be an attribute I think and um, uh, we usually try to look for class or ID I think so when you find class it was class equals price double underscore numbers um, and the reason I choose to use price double underscore numbers not overflow inner for example is because um, uh, well like when when after you iterate through so many different pages a lot of times you'll see that the stuff changes and this might contain something else in a different page so uh, it's just better to kind of like you can kind of figure okay price numbers okay obviously it's talking about the numbers um, and that's what I'm looking for um, so with the title here and also what you can do uh, to test that instead of just guessing is um, I guess that was important to say too so I said price numbers so we want to do web dot find uh oh element by class name and price numbers uh, so what is it dot text okay so what it did was it printed out the numbers so there might be uh, a different one that I could choose that would have that period in there or something like that but what I have understood about the Home Depot website is that um, you're always going to have your cents on the back of the price so I can safely assume that the last two digits on uh, every price is going to be the cents so not three thousand five hundred fifty two dollars but th uh, thirty five dollars and fifty two cents so what I did was I did some string formatting so uh, probably there's probably a better way to do this but I just said forget it and just hurried up and did it so this is going to be um, dot tax at index uh, till negative two, and what what this is saying is give me till negative end. So negative index two is this character because this is negative one. This is negative two, index negative two. Um, and I want to go up until that because I know that that's going to be my sense. So I'm getting this is just going to give me all of this. This part is going to give me just the 35 part with the dollar sign. Then plus my period for my decimal. And then we're going to do the same line again. Uh oh. Uh, so what did I do? 
accidentally do that. And then we're going to do plus my that thing, then plus another one of these. Uh, oh, and then I said dot text at index uh, until negative two. And then we're going to do that at index uh, negative two until. Okay, no, don't control S. All right, we're going to hit enter on that, and that's what we wanted. <clears throat> so it might look a little bit complicated. I hope not too much. It's really not. Uh, that was the easiest. In my, that was the easiest way for me to do it. There's probably another way, but I don't care. So anyway, so um, all right, index, and that is the line for price un double underscore numbers. And then the title, we did the same thing. Um, so we had pod dash plp double underscore description. Um, so let's go here. Right click, inspect, and. So span class, uh, no, because if you look on the left side of the screen, you see all that's highlighted is the brand name, and that's not what I want. I want this whole thing. So I want to go up a little bit. So A class, uh, so this is what I did. Okay, yep. All right, also, so you see we have a div class, and the reason I talk about the tag is because when you're using beautiful soup which we're also going to do um, we're going to need to use the tags uh, but not with uh, not with selenium I guess but anyway so we have our class again and then in the parentheses there's a whole lot of stuff right here you don't need all of that I don't even know if you can use all of that what you're going to want to do is these are separated by that blank space right there so this is two different class names on the same element what you're going to want to do is pick the class name that's more relevant to what it is that you're looking for I think because I think that these other ones can just be formatting like text formatting or, and stuff like that so um, so and I it's usually like the first thing uh, it's usually like the first class name and not anyone after that usually I think so anyway, that's the one I'm going to do. So it's got the word description in it, and I said, okay, that sounds more relevant to what I'm looking for, the description of the title or whatever, than JS pod click analytics. So that's the one I'm going to go with, and that's the one that works. Index, and that is what I put in there. And then what happens, you need to put dot text at the end of this, because if you don't, um, you're getting a web element so actually if we copy this without the dot text uh, <clears throat> what this returns um, is whatever this is I don't know what this thing is uh, so you do stuff with this so you can um, if you're gonna if you're gonna navigate with selenium if you want to go to another uh, URL what you could do is um, because that's the same thing as that. You just you do something with it, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> so web dot get uh, http uh, ebay dot com, and then it's going to oh well sorry that was the wrong one. I'm looking for this one, but then it goes to that website. Um, so same thing with you know http facebook dot com. Same thing. Um, it's all the same, but when you call web dot, uh, well, I don't know, you get new HTML every time you go to a new page, so I think you just have to keep that in mind. So anyway, that's the end of this video. I hope you semi sort of understood it. Um, in the next videos, I'm going to continue collecting this data, and then we're going to um, save it to our CSV for... Uh, some analysis of our own so thank you for attending today and I hope to see you in the next one give me a like and a subscribe and a thumbs up and all that other good stuff please alright thanks